I got to this point at the end of the first video, so now what I want to now do is define all these flows uh, using the values of the stocks. And the easiest one to indicate is how to define the rate of interest. So here's the interest paid by capitalists on loans to capitalists. And obviously the interest you pay is the rate of interest multiplied by the uh, outstanding level of debt. So you can just put the mouse uh, anywhere you like on the canvas and start typing and Minsky then brings up a text import window. So this is the rate of interest on loans that banks charge to capitalists and Minsky will format that as little r lowercase uh, subscript l superscript k and then you get a chance to define that. Well that's going to be a parameter. I, I could make it a variable in a more complicated model but I'll make it a parameter here that you have to divide a value for. So let's say it's um, 6% as an initial level and the maximum value is 20% and the minimum is uh, 1% and the step size is 1% and I'll show you how that works shortly. So there's your rate of interest. Uh, drag this up here, put it next to the K and I want to then multiply out, uh, capital, uh, outstanding loans to capitalists by the rate of interest uh, charged by banks for loans to capitalists. Just type the multiply key and Minsky will put that on the keyboard. And then notice that there are these input and output circles in each of these blocks. Uh, if you click on a circle and drag it to the, the output of one block to the input of another, uh, good grief, uh, bloody spam. Uh, so I've now got, the, that's wired up the rate of interest, the, the, the level of uh, the outstanding debt. I now drag the wire out for the interest rate and that will now click uh, it's an intelligent wire, so if you get to this point it'll look for the nearest input to click onto and did over here, so drag this out a bit. Even if you don't put it right on the circle, it'll jump to the nearest case. Now I've now defined an equation, uh, which is the interest on and, and loans to capitalists is the debt of capitalists multiplied by the interest rate banks charge to capitalists. And that's the equation you can see here. I can't magnify that, but you can see that's the particular equation. Oh, that's the rate of interest there, and there's the interest flow itself shown on the, equa on the equation. So what you're doing is actually setting up mathematical equations. Um, and what Minsky has done by setting up these tables, by the way, um, this is just a set of tables, but what this tells you is the initial value for the level of uh, capital, uh, in this case loans to capitalists, and the rate of change of that over time. So what Minsky derives from this column is the rate of change of uh, debt by capitalists is new loans minus repayment of old loans. And that as an equation, for those who are into that sort of stuff, uh, we've got a formatting hassle going on here right now uh, with these subs turning up. This is the sort of stuff we have to uh, fix up over time, bugs in software. Uh, that's uh, where about that's the deposit accounts here. Where's the loans? That's one here. Rate of, okay, rate of change of capital, of, of loans to capitalists is new loans minus repayment of old loans. So that's the sort of basic equation. Now I'm going to set up the remainder of equations here, and two of the most obvious that uh, have, to have, to have uh, the rate of growth of loans and the rate of repayment of loans, both depending on the current level of outstanding loans. And uh, you could again, you could make this more complicated. Um, you could argue some sort of behavioural function behind uh, the rate of lending and the rate of repayment. Uh, I'm just going to sit just with what I've got inside the model and have. Uh, repayment uh, reflecting the level of outstanding debt and new loans also reflecting the level of outstanding debt and having some sort of parameter that lets you change how fast those debts occur, uh, how fast they change. So here's the rate of new lending and the trick that I use uh, comes from engineering. I'll just take a copy of the uh, variable for our loans to capitalists here. The trick that I use uh, it comes from engineering where they use what's called a time constant to talk about how fast um, variables change. These are time constants for how fast a spring compresses under pressure and that sort of thing. And the symbol they use is tau, the Greek, the Greek letter, the Greek T, tau, uh, with some indicator for what uh, t um, tau, this particular tau is related to. So I type the backslash key, that tells Minsky to format this using what's the, the mathematical formatting language called latex and uh, unlike the spam I'm getting chucked in my Google. Does anybody know how to get rid of that? I, think I, I get garbage from Google all the time. Um, 
Um, is, you know, the latex here is a mathematical formatting language, so if I type backslash T-A-U, tau, that tells Minsky to format that as the Greek letter T, or the Greek letter tau. And subscript, uh, uh, L for the rate of lending, and to make it possible to include different rates of lending for different classes in the model, I'll make it subscript K as well. So that's now a new parameter. Again, that could be a variable in a more complicated model. And what I'm going to say here is effectively is that I'm going to assume that the rate of loans is such that if lending occurred at a continuous rate, uh, that's uh, formatting the previous movie in the background there, if lending occurred at a continuous rate, uh, then the loans would double in seven years. That's, that's what the seven there stands for. And I'll say, well, the slowest rate that loans might double, let us say, doubling every 20 years, the fastest, if we go back to the, what happened during the, uh, the prelude to the financial crisis in countries like uh, Ireland, when debt increased by 40% per year, then that could be as low as doubling every two years and have a step size uh, in the function, I'll be, I'll be using that when I run the model, of one. So I've got one year, two years, three years, four years, five years, and so on out to further. So there's now my tau LK. And if I now divide um, the outstanding debt by the time constant, that will tell you, given that assumption, how, how, how much lending occurs uh, at the beginning of the simulation of the model. So I wire this up here, wire that there, attach this to L, and I've now got an equation uh, that's going to give me the rate at which loans increase. And if I just hit the, the stop key, that will tell Minsky to calculate. So that's saying if the um, loans uh, double the amount of outstanding debt every seven years and the debt starts at 100 billion, then the new loans in the first year will be 14.3 billion, which you can tell is 100 divided by seven. So that's given me a, a calculation for the rate of lending. I'm going to take, just take a copy of these parameters and, and whack them up the top here so that I can modify them uh, all in one spot uh, later on when I actually run the model. So there's rate of interest on loans, rate of uh, the, the time constant for rate at which loans double. I'll do a similar thing here for the um, rate of lending. And so this is now the rate, the rate I give here, which I'm going to call tau underscore r for repayment uppercase k for capitalists. Make that into a parameter as well and give that a value also, the same value I've given for loans here of 7, which says effectively that if capitalists continued repaying at this rate in a linear fashion and nothing else happened to the accounts, then in 7 years the debt would be reduced to 0. Again, the same maximum. So 20 years for a very slow rate of repayment, um, say 4 years for a very fast rate of repayment, and a step size of one when I change it during a simulation. There's my tau k. Drag it up here. Take another copy of kl here. Place it above the time constant. Press the divide by key. Drag the arrow. Oops, didn't quite do that properly. Drag the arrows out. And there's my rate of, re of uh, repayment. Now, if you've got the basic idea there, then you can go on to the next video. But I'll cover one thing, which uh, is part of turning this into a model of uh, economic activity. And the time, what I uh, use is something which really comes out of, um, uh, well, actually, if you don't know, it's not left wing. It's just happened that Marx was the first one to think of it, the idea of a turnover rate for the firm sector. So he argued that, uh, uh, that there's a certain rate at which money turns over in the firm sector, and that's what generates overall GDP. So I'm going to have a rate of uh, tau f for the rate at which the money in the firm sector turns over, and that then generates dividends, wage payments, and interest. So let's put that in here, tau f, and uh, again, make that a parameter. Again, it could be a variable in a more sophisticated model, and say that the money turns over every half a year. So if you have $100 billion in your firm's deposit account, then that will generate $200 billion per year worth of economic activity. And I'll give a, a maximum value of, say, 0 0.25, which is saying that it turns over four times a year. Uh, actually, hang on a second, make that one, which is very slow, 0 0.25. For, um, the minimum, which is quite fast, and the step size is 0 0.25. So that's now my rate of turnover 
of money in the firm sector and if I divide the firm sector's amount of money by that time constant then I now have the definition of what economists always use the symbol Y for which is GDP. So press the letter Y, hit the enter key, uh, I don't want to do any definitions that it's now going to be defined by the flows on the screen. Press the escape key and now come down and drag this here and now what I've said is output uh, in monetary terms, not physical output, this is going to be an entirely monetary model. It, it, at some later stage I'll, be, uh, I'll have the time to add the uh, real economy, real sector in there, but this is just to indicate the monetary size of modern monetary theory. So that's the firm, amount of money in the firm's deposit account divided by the time constant which is half a year, which means your GDP in this economy, if I click the stop key, will be $140 billion per year. Now that's output. Now I think can then uh, say, well output will either, in monetary terms, will either go out as profits or wages, so say that the, sh uh, that the share that goes to capitalists is, say, 30% of GDP with a maximum of, say, 50%, minimum of 15%, and a step size of 5%. want to change it during a simulation. And then that's... Oh, pardon me, I've got to change that to a parameter. I don't have to, but it's just being more thorough. Uh, just to indicate that it's not determined by anything else in the model. So if I multiply that... Uh, the share that goes to capitalists by the total amount of GDP, then that is going to define for me the level of profit, in which I use the symbol uh, uppercase uh, Greek character pi. And again, press escape to shut that window, drag here. There, I've now, now I've now got profits defined. And if I then now, what I now define as wages, or well, wages in this simple, very simple. Uh, model. This is wages are going to be gross profits, uh, GDP minus gross profits. So put the W over there, minus key uh, here, drag a Y. I can have multiple Ys coming out of the one block. Drag the Y from Y to the minus key, from the profit to the plus half from the minus key. Profit to the negative. Oops, to the negative bit. Why the I've now defined wages as being output minus profits. Now. With that done, I can also say that, and I've got dividends being paid to capitalists, I can say that all profits are paid out as dividends. Again, I could make that more sophisticated. I can have part of it being retained for investment, but that, this will work for the basic little model I'm trying to put together here to indicate the accounting aspects of modern monetary theory. So there's my uh, turnover of money in the firm sector, generates GDP, which goes to either capitalists or, or workers and is of the firm of first sector or workers and is paid out, uh, the profits are paid out as dividends to the capitalists. So that's the basic logic. I'm now going to do a similar thing here to define consumption by each of workers, uh, bankers and capitalists as depending upon the amount of money in their accounts. And I'll do that off screen and come back because uh, again I think you've got the basic idea. I'm going to use time constants for that. And then we're going to get the second stage or the third stage of putting this model together.